Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Kika and today I have gone through the archives and I want to share my top five most complicated knits that I've done over the years. All of these are designed and knitted by myself. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first one is this one. Um, this is called the Saga cardigan, if I if I remember correctly. I have it on my Ravelry page. I've made a pattern for it. Um, so if you really like the, these cables and how it looks, you can go ahead and buy that pattern. It is pretty old, but um, I think people have successfully managed to follow it, even though it is a long ago. Um, this was a pretty complicated one because I really was interested in combining different stitch patterns. So we have some double moss stitch up here. Oh, it has a stain here, so <clears throat> please don't look at that. <laughs> um, I actually knitted this for, for my mom. She bought these yarns when we were in Tallinn. Like, again, this is like for like, oh my God, 10 years ago? No, maybe not 10 years ago, but maybe like seven years ago. <laughs> um, she bought these yarns when we were in Tallinn. I wanted to go there to buy yarn um, and then she followed along and this was actually a special one from Drops, I remember. Uh, I have no idea the label. Uh, I think it's like a wool something mix. You can see it's been worn quite a bit, but um, this was really an attempt to just go all in with the cables and the textures and it was one of those projects that, because the lace cable in the back, there's a lot going on, so I really had to follow the chart. So it wasn't really a project that um, you could kind of just sit and watch TV and not mind. What I really like about it is also these crochet buttons that I made in the end, just with the yarn itself. It's so bulky and I think I used a like, pretty small crochet needle. So yeah, I've just crocheted some buttons. Um, I mean, overall, I think this is a nice, really nice cardigan um, and one that both me and my mom have worn a lot. In place number four we have this sweater. This is a sweater that I made very inspired by this brand called Ivana Helsinki. It's a Finnish brand and also uh, the Moomin uh, saga, or if you know uh, the Moomin Trolls by Tuve Jansson, she's also a Finnish artist and illustrator <laughs> and author. And in one of the Moomin Trolls, um, there is this horse called the Prima Donna's horse, and uh, that is the inspiration for this thing that arguably kind of looks like a cow. <laughs> so um, this was a kind of an eclectic mix. This is yarn I bought at a craft fair, I remember, in Helsinki. Um, and these, um, like it's, it's a weird color mix. It's like a weird, everything is kind of weird, but I really like it. I mean, it has like a very childish vibe, but this was really, really complicated. complicated. Because as you can see, I've done the bunnies in one color and then the hearts in one color on the same row. So I'll show you in a second once I take this off. I have like insane yarn floats on the other side. So when you, Vico is <laughs> playing around. So that is what you're hearing in the background. He has this little ball and he's just going crazy, but never mind. I'm gonna do my thing. <laughs> um, anyway, so I have this cl crazy uh, yarn floats uh, on the other side because when you work with stranded yarn, stranded color work in the round, you have to carry the other yarn with you, of course. So there's just like insane yarn float. So that's why I felt like this was a really complicated one. It was kind of complicated to uh, make. I remember I was knitting this when I was actually still in school. Um, doing this production it was in the middle of winter. It was really dark and this was kind of keeping me going in the evenings. One really nice detail I like though. I made a little ribbon for one of the horses slash cows in the back. Um, and yeah, I mean, I did wear this quite a lot, uh, honestly, and I could still wear it, I think. Um, it's really, yeah, it's very special, <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, these 
entire bin in a box under the bed and I think the cats go in there and sleep so they're kind of <laughs> dusty. <laughs> okay, in place number three we have the Audrey cardigan, which is truly one of my pride and joys. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to say in the beginning, all of these are obviously designed and <laughs> designed by myself. Um, or maybe that was kind of obvious. So this is the Audrey cardigan, which I've knitted from Drops Nepal yarn. Um, thank you Vigo for assisting. <laughs> this was a, um, so the pattern work there is there on the back. I got the inspiration or got the stitches from this amazing book. Um, it's by Hitomi Shida. It's like a Japanese knitting book. Um, and I originally got it actually in San Francisco in Japanese. And then later I found it here in Finland. It was translated into Finnish. I think it's translated into so many languages. If you ever get your hands on this book or you find it, I can really recommend it. There are so, so many gorgeous stitches in there. Um, and there are the, well, at least in the Finnish one, I could finally like understand some of the symbols, but I kind of tried to figure out by myself uh, back then. And I have made a pattern for this one only in size small. Um, so this is that one, but obviously it's really easy to make bigger if you just make more of like here, the stockinette stitch parts, which you have all over. You could just make more stitches there if you're kind of a, like a bit uh, comfortable with knitting. <laughs> you could totally make that. But this one I used so, so much when I had just made it. Um, now I feel like um, back in my dancing days, I was pretty tiny and very fit. Now I feel like it's a little, maybe small, like especially around here, I feel it's a little snug. Um, but still the idea, and I really, I'm dreaming of making an updated version of this Audrey cardigan because I do think it is like, and I even crocheted the buttons and I crocheted around here, the, uh, front edges and around the neckline as well. I think, no, there isn't crochet. No, it's only, it starts from here. Anyways, uh, so full of detail and it's kind of lace patterns. It has like these bobbles, um, and it's just one that took well, it took so much time to knit because I knitted back and forth. Um, so you could obviously have done this instead in the round and then just do a stick where you, in the end, you uh, use a scissor and cut it open, but I knitted it back and forth. I do remember though that I really felt like it went really quickly because I was all the time reading the chart and the pattern um, or the pattern and the chart that I had made for it. So I felt like it went really quickly even though it was very complicated. I, like every time I, got through a row, it felt like such a victory. I've been moving on to second place and this is really something special. So I, um, around six or seven years ago, bought a mechanical knitting machine from an old or older lady. <laughs> And I was really into machine knitting back then. So I knitted a lot of things with the machine. And I remember when I was knitting with the knitting machine, the thing with that, oh, I took a course first because it's notoriously uh, complicated to knit with a knitting machine. But once you get a hang of it, I really enjoyed it. But the thing was when you made a mistake, so if you would drop a stitch or something would happen, it was almost better to just start from the beginning because that was just such a hassle. Um, yeah, and if everybody or anybody has tried uh, machine knitting out there, you'll know what I mean. Um, it's really like uh, stuff you need to have a lot of patience with. If you do kind of some sudden moves or something happens, like, no, no, you have to be very zen while you are working with a knitting machine. And so this is knitted on that machine. Let me see, yeah. So I knitted it um, on the machine and actually in two pieces. And then, uh, and the reason for doing two pieces, I think there was something technical because I wanted to have different colors. I can't exactly remember. And then I've embroidered on top of them, but let me just pop this on. Um, and it's knitted in Drops Alpaca. I think it's just called Alpaca, that yarn. Um, it was, uh, had like the perfect um, thickness for that mechanical knitting machine that I had. Um, so I used uh, Drops Alpaca a lot also because it was pretty affordable and I didn't have so much money. Um, and yeah, so this is one of those things that I spent an insane amount of time with and it was very complicated to figure all of this out. But um, I am really, I mean, this is one of my pride and glories. I actually made also one in another color that I actually did sell. 
um, I'll try to find a picture of it and put it in here. Um, one of the tricky things, like I wish I would have done a different type of solution for the front edges here because I've just embroidered this little thing here. Here it kind of lays nice and flat, but here it just wraps in, even though I've blocked it and done like everything <laughs> I've tried to make it not roll. I think I even have did, yeah, I did a little like a crochet edge. Should probably have done it a little bit thicker, but it's still like, I mean, now I think if I would do a similar cardigan, I would do maybe the sleeves even bigger, maybe longer, um, but it's still like one of those very, I think, unique ones. And I, I just really was into it. Again, you can see like the bunny, like I was inspired by Ivana Helsinki, I think here again and just wanted to add like lots of intricacy into it. Also another really huge inspiration for me back then was Odd Molly and especially like the really, really like uh, old stuff that Odd Molly did. Uh, in the beginning they had like lots of embroidery. I mean, they still have lots of embroidery and just like patterns and colors. Uh, so that's also something that I think I drew a lot of inspiration for this one. We have one left. This is the most complicated knitted project I've ever done. And let me show you. Ta-da! So, the most uh, complicated knitted and crocheted, crocheted, crochet <laughs> work I've ever done. Because here I have combined knitting with crochet. And the story of this was, well, I was first of all going through a very kind of bohemian uh, phase where I just really was, uh, like it was that time when like this kind of boho style was really into it. Like the kind of style that I imagined, like, you know, those girls in LA, like with uh, long wavy hair and flowers in their hair <laughs> and kind of long dresses. And like that kind of style was really what I wanted to have as well. And then I wanted to have, or make something with these really, really gorgeous yarns that I have. These are all yarns that I, uh, made my poor dad when he went to New York uh, go to the legendary Pearl Soho store that I've never been to but it is located in uh, New York and I sat in there with a big list of yarns that I wanted him to bring for me and then I really struggled like I thought like I have to do something amazing with these yarns and this is one of the things I did so well the sleeves are knitted they are knitted in I think it's um, yarn from Rowan no idea if they have that yarn anymore, but I had two colors, but I didn't have, um, I think I had more of the brown one, even though I kind of wanted to have more of the white one, but then I kind of went for this kind of solution. And then I crocheted and knitted the back and like the whole, like the big thing for me was these flowers. Um, but I remember it was so, so tricky because I did crochet these flowers, but then they would kind of flare out a lot um, so it looked like I remember first when I was trying it on like it looked like like they were really like bulky like this so I couldn't get them to lay flat I probably haven't blocked this so that's probably something I could have done um, but I remember I spent so much time on just trying to get everything to lie nice and flat and I actually have used this quite a bit it's really warm um, and I did these crochet buttons um, and then yeah, here is also crochet this is crocheted this is knitted and there are some panels in the back with some, I think, lace, no cables. Um, but this was just like a big construction learning curve for me. And also learning that when you crochet something, because it usually becomes more stiff than when you knit it, it's usually a little bit more stretchy. So how to combine those two things, that is really something I would like to explore more and do more of and probably something I am going to explore and do more of. Um, oh yeah, this was a little bit annoying with this. Like I wish I would have made it a little um, tighter because as you can see, like it's a little bit like this, but <laughs> it's still like, it's still like a piece of art, I feel like. All right, those are my top five complicated pieces. Let me know and comment down below which one you thought were, had the most wow effect on which one of these you enjoyed uh, the most. And also let me know what's the most complicated thing you've ever knitted. I would love to hear your experiences down in a comment below. Also, you can always come and say hi 
over at Kudumakika on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!